The Virginia Tech Texas game will tip off in six minutes at 338. If we could have an opening statement from Coach Jones, please, and they'll take questions for the student athletes. I, I'd just like to start off by saying I'm extremely proud of my group. Um, I thought we accomplished a lot. Um, the guys played hard, they played well together, um, left it all out on the court, and as a coach, it's all you really can ask for. Uh, my seniors were tremendous. Um, they qualified for three NCAA tournaments. It's the first time in Yale history that's happened. So kudos to them and their efforts. Uh, these two young men uh, you know, actually had to sit out a year of school to come back to have this opportunity. And I'm grateful for them. And I'm happy that they had the opportunity to showcase themselves and help our program continue in the right direction. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes, please. Jalen, uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Did, can you describe, I mean, Purdue's offense is so varied. They have so many different guys with different skill sets. And just what the challenge is in defending, trying to defend that? Um, I mean, they have a 7'4 guy in the middle who shoots 66% from the field in 20 minutes a game, averages 15 and 8. Um, and on top of that, they have a t probable top five pick <laughs> guard, you know who came out and was three for six from three when that's not really what he's known for. And on top of that, he's a, one of the most athletic players in the country coming downhill. And so when you combine those two things with the fact that they also have you know, their the top five offense in the country, it's, it's hard to stop. And I think we did a good job. And, but some of the things you know, that we needed to go our way just didn't go our way. You know, some of the calls that you know, we wish came our way, you know, they made 27 to 33 free throws. And they're big guys who usually shoot around 50% shot about 80 percent and so if those things happen you know it's, it's gonna hard to win a team who's was in the big 10 championship game and you know and lost the big 10 championship game so i'm proud of our team for competing you know we're an undersized team playing against one of the biggest teams in the country and so you know i thought we played tough and it didn't go our way it's bob kravitz with the athletic azar just to follow up on that what is it like to actually play against that much size um, I mean, it's, it's without saying, like, it's, it's different than the Ivy League, obviously. Um, I mean, and it was something that, like, we were going to try to prepare for. I mean, like, we, I thought we prepared in a way that gave us a chance to come out victorious. And kind of like Jalen said, there were just a few things, maybe a few mishaps that we missed early in the game and, and stuff like that during runs that, that just compounded. And in a game like that against a team that, you know, held the number one spot in the country for a couple of weeks um, at the beginning of the season. It, I mean, it's going to be hard to come out with a victory. Um, so we needed to play a little better than we did. And um, I mean, that's just how it goes. It was one of those days. Right here in front. Jay Cohen, Associated Press. Rezar, you, you got off to a really nice start and then it slowed down a little bit. Did they do anything different on you during the course of the game to help sort of try and slow you down? Um, not that I felt. I mean, I felt like I missed a lot of 
shots that I'm very more than capable of making. Um, and some of them weren't even contested or, or that contested. So, you know, I'll obviously look inwards um, when it comes to that because I feel like I can get any shot off on the court. It's just a matter of, you know, making it. And those are shots that I work on. Um, so, I mean, I'm not really paying attention to, to what they're doing. I didn't sense any, like, extreme changes or anything like that. I felt like I just missed some shots in the second half. Anything else for the student athletes? Right there. Will McCormack with the Yale Daily News. Azar Jalen, you guys hung around in the first half and then were down, you know, about a dozen at halftime. Came out and had two early back baskets in the, in the start of the second. What was sort of the halftime discussion like, and what were your sort of your plans coming out in the second half? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we had to come out and, and make a run from the get-go. You know, if we wouldn't have a chance to win the game. We, we couldn't let them get comfortable again right off the bat. And so to come out, you know, make a push, you know, off the first possession was, you know, our primary focus and to just continue playing our game. You know, if, if we continue to do what we do over the course of 40 minutes and we, we make shots and we run, you know, run our actions well, we'll give ourselves a good chance regardless of the runs that they make. And, you know, we shot four for 17 from three and 23 for 63 from the field. I mean, and so, you know, some of those shots just have to go down for it. You know, we, it got down to nine. You know, they went on the run, and we weren't able to weather it enough to keep it down. We will let the student athletes go. Thank you, gentlemen. And questions for Coach Jones, please. All right, boys. Uh, Coach. Andy Craig with the Exponent. I just want to ask, kind of, I uh, want you to talk about kind of the issues your team faced without being able to establish, establish a post presence, kind of, the idea that obviously we had six inches over the uh, uh, you know the height that you guys had, and I want to talk about the lower selection, the lower percentage shots you guys had to take. Kind of, uh, you're outscoring the paint, and I mean, I don't know where I'm trying to go with that. Like, I, I don't know either. <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you feel that because of uh, kind of the lack of height you had in your team that you had to take lower percentage shots outside of the paint? Well, I, I, you probably haven't seen us play most of the year, right? Probably your first game. So the shots we had today are similar to the shots that we normally take. You know, like Azar said, he had a lot of open shots that he thought that he could make. Um, the one thing that I wish we could have done a better job of is getting the ball to Matt Noling in the first in the second in the first half. Um, he's normally the guy that scores at the basket. Our five guys don't really do that quite often. Maybe we get him off a roll, but. When you know um, they they have drop coverage and they have Edie in the middle of paint, it's hard for anybody to score at the basket. Um, so um, I'm not certain that that it forced us to taking a lot of shots that we don't normally take. I thought we had a lot of those, and you know we, we missed some opportunities that I felt like you know should have gone down but did not. Hi, uh, James uh, J. Cohen with the Associated Press. Uh, first, one kind of quick one. Um, Putting Jarvis in the starting lineup, was that out of concern about the size of Purdue? Or was there another uh, rationale there? Yeah, that's my dad right there. And uh, he didn't raise a fool. So, <laughs> um, you know, we could have st started Isaiah Kelly at six foot six and a half against seven foot four, but that doesn't seem to be too reasonable to me. So um, we tried to match up with size, yeah, of course. Um, and EJ is a kid that, you know, he's a, he plays starters minutes anyway. He and uh, Isaiah split time. So what we were trying to do is have uh, EJ play against uh, Edie and have um, Isaiah play against Williams. And, and it then, turned out that Williams played a lot less tonight. And then uh, secondly, like, can you explain from a coaching perspective how difficult it is to prepare for a team like Purdue with that seven foot four size inside and the speed of someone like Ivy, who just might be the fastest player in college basketball? Yeah, so I think I may have answered this before. Like, I was fine in terms of their personnel outside of Edie. Like he's he's just a there's nobody like him in the, in the country. Like like have you seen anybody in your life as big as he is? Like other than Yao Ming, I've seen nobody as big as he is. So that he's the second largest man I've ever seen, right? And he's really good. So and so from that standpoint, it's hard to try to game plan for that because you don't you, we don't have a seven foot four guy on campus that we can roll around there and try to defend and try to go up against. So that obviously makes it difficult. Um, the biggest issue for us was putting him on the foul line and him making free throws. Um, again, if he shot normally what, what he normally shoots, like he took more free throws 
he took one less free throw than our entire team. So that, that was a huge difference in the game as far as I see it. You're welcome. Anything else for Coach? Right there. Coach, just curious to hear about that sort of final, final two minutes when you subbed Jalen and Azar out back to back, gave him a hug. Just wondering what you told them and what that moment was like. Well, again, it's, it's, it's a special moment between coach and player, right? Um, these guys have given so much of themselves for the betterment of our team. Um, may they made sacrifices to be special. And it's the last time I'm going to see him. I, I've said this to my guys. I'm 58 years old, um, and I may see each of them maybe five more times in my life. I'm not sure where I came up with that number five, but it seems fairly accurate to me that I'm not going to see them anymore. That you know they're going to go on in, in life, and maybe they'll be back for an alumni game or come and watch a game. But that's going to be it. It's 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 winding down. So it's just one of those times that I wanted to take in and make sure that they, they know how I felt about them and uh, how special they have been for our program. Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. A reminder that a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Hub at ncaa.veritone.com, and transcripts will be available as soon as possible and will be posted shortly. Thank you.